hello everyone welcome back to my channel i'm your host miss kk and this is the wave it is your weekly show that looks at topics related to personal family and business finance and our hope is that by the time we get to the end of this conversations you are really better equipped to make sound financial decisions so if you're new here thank you so much for stopping by we really appreciate having you on board please do consider subscribing and if you're already a returning subscriber an awesome appreciation for always sticking by and engaging with our various uh, social media platforms especially there by instagram i really appreciate so if you're not following us on instagram please do follow us at money matters with budget b there we engage daily with our followers post daily reels post you know daily instagram post and also just get to answer your questions in the dm so if you have a quick question that you're wondering what to do you can dm i always try to respond within a day or so so let's continue engaging so that we can evolve and grow with our finances it is almost the end of the year and year and year end fatigue is creeping a lot on a lot of us a lot of us are tired but please do make sure that you're still you're not letting the wheels go off your finances you are reviewing your budgets on a monthly basis especially with the festive season approaching do put that budget in ad in advance so that you don't end up overspending on the festivities and come back in january broke we all had festive season so if you do have money on a 32 day please go and put in your request ahead of time we are so tired of hearing oh no please give me money i have money on 32 day but i can't put in now it's so late if you know you're going to need money in january and you have money on your investment you can actually start putting that money request in so that come january you are sorted and you don't have to beg anyone but nonetheless just getting a bit sidetracked here so today we are going to talk about payslips review so this is the third video i'm going to be doing on payslips so if you haven't done uh previously watched the previous two video please do go check them out the reason why i'm doing this one specifically is because i was requested by someone to please look at the payslips in the garment sector because they look slightly different and i had to ask two of my followers to share their payslips so that i can just orientate myself with payslips in the garment sector because i don't really have that much exposure and i didn't want to you know use a hypothetical example it's always good to look at the numbers and give a practical or film the video from a practical point of view and while there are some minor differences in principle they all look the same so we have the first section that talks about how much your gross earnings are and we have the second section that talks about the deduction and lastly earnings minus deductions will give you a net pay which is the money that is ultimately deposited in your bank account so in the private sector the first component is normally called total earnings and that total earnings gives us a subtotal called total cost to company in the garment sector though they don't seem to have a category called total cost to company the first portion of their payslip is a written payment but the things that are within that category that are written payment is equivalent to your total cost to company so in essence it's how much the the government is incurring for having you on their payslip so how is how much is it costing them to have you on their payslip so in this payment section you would have your basic salary then you would have housing subsidy if you do have housing subsidy if you don't have housing subsidies they would put housing allowance there maybe they would put transport allowance they'll put vehicle allowance they would put you know snt they'll put all the benefits that you as an employee and as an employee have from the government so the payment section of your payslip in government is equivalent to our total cost to company in the private sector so whilst we're here i just want to look at the key distinction between housing subsidy in government and housing subsidy in the private sector when it's a salary structuring in the private sector so what i've actually established is that in government you have a rank to say you know you are a teacher you have this degree or you are a police officer you have this rank or you are a prisoner you know personnel you have this rank they will tell you because of the rank you have and the income level you earn you are eligible for this much subsidy so for example they will say they will say that you are eligible for 500,000 in subsidy in housing subsidy right then when you, it's time for you to look for a house you go to the bank the bank will ask you to bring your payslip they will ask you to fill in your expenditure and income report almost like a monthly budget for them to determine how much money you have left at the end of the day because the bank knows that a lot of people in the house in the garment sector has housing subsidy they will also ask you to bring a subsidy letter to them and they'll compute how much you qualify 
all right so if they compute how much you qualify they will tell you because of your income level and your housing subsidy maybe let's just say for argument's sake we will give you your housing subsidy is 500 but you qualify for a house that is 600,000. all right if you qualify for housing that a house that is 600,000, that means you have a hundred thousand extra that is not covered by the government so the government will then calculate to say based on your 500,000 per 500,000 that you qualify as housing subsidy we as the government will be able to cover for you 3,000 for argument's sake then the government will calculate to say that the 3,000 they will give it to you then they'll put on your total earnings or your payment section 3000 as housing subsidy all right that's the first component then the bank will say all right you qualified for 600000 on a monthly basis we will be charging you 5000 per month as your bond the government will then pay the 3000 and you as an employee would fork up the 2000 to make up your total installment so that is what is going to happen in the government sector. The, the government will communicate to you what your housing subsidy is. They will calculate what they will be able to cover on a monthly basis and they will put that on, on your total earnings as housing subsidy amount. In the private sector, on the other hand, I go to the bank. I tell the bank I want a house. The bank asks for my expenditure an income report. They calculate for me. I qualify for, you know, um, 600,000 and I get that and my bond is going to be about or 5,000 per month. Then I tell my employer, I now have a house. Please allocate a portion of my salary to my housing subsidy so that I can benefit from a tax perspective. You in the private sector needs to go back to your employer and your employer would allocate a portion of your salary because in the private sector, housing subsidy is just the structuring that we do to get a tax benefit so that is the main principle different so we've covered the gross earnings or we've covered the payment aspect of your pay slabs. then we move on to deductions so in the deductions in the government sector here you would have your medical aid the portion that you are covering as an employee because remember the government pays a portion you pay a portion the portion that you are covering as an employee would go there the portion that you are covering uh, towards your um, or the payment that you are making towards your union because most of you guys belong to the union in the government the government sector if you are paying gipf your pension would be deducted from there and the one thing that i've noticed that is slightly different in the government compared to the private sector is how they handle subsidies when it comes to deductions so remember we said that you have your housing subsidy the bank tells you we are going to charge you five thousand the government is charging is covering three three thousand and you as an employee are covering two thousand so the government takes off the full five thousand and paid over to the bank so the money that comes in your account is after your full hundred percent deduction whereas in the private sector the employer allocates a portion of your salary to a housing subsidy they calculate your tax benefit then they pay the money into your account your bank then comes and deduct their portion their five thousand after the money was already deposited in your account so if you have a housing subsidy in the private sector in the government sector someone in the government sector will net less because they will get after the government has already taken off the full amount whereas in the private sector you're likely to net more and then you go deal with your lenders directly and the other thing that i've also noticed that a lot of the government employees have their personal deduction directly going off their account if you have a loan if you have a housing um if you have a loan if you have a housing insurance life insurance on all of those those things get to have to be deducted on your payslip so the money you get in your bank account is after all these loans have deducted and all these policies have deducted whereas in the private sectors our employers don't want to be dealing with all of that those are your personal affairs they will pay the money in your account then the policies the insurance and mainly your loans will deduct after the money has been deposited in your account so social security works the same pension funds works the same medical aids works the same um union if you have the union deduction that's likely to deduct before money is paid in your account so in essence the pay slips are the same you have payments which is your gross earnings which is your total cost to company then you have deductions what gets deducted before the money gets into your account and after the money gets into your account is slightly different and so this is in overall the difference between the two and the other thing that I also found quite interesting when I was having the conversation with the friends that shared the payslip is what happens 
when you get promoted and your subsidy increases so in government if you get promoted let's say you were a teacher and now you're a principal and because you're a principal your salary ban has increased by default it means your housing subsidy has also increased so let's just say for argument's sake you were in a situation where your house was 500 was 600,000 but your housing subsidy was only 500 so you were short 100,000 so simply because your uh, salary increased and your housing subsidy has increased, you can't go back to the government and say, please increase the portion that you're contributing to the bank because the government has will only do that if you have improved or upgraded your house. So your housing subsidy is given based on the value of your house unless you are upgrading your house and you can prove to the government that your house is worth more they will keep you they will keep giving you the original housing subsidy you qualify for contrast that with what happens in the private sector so if i go in the private sector and for some odd reason um let's say i go to the bank and my house is fifteen thousand, and i come to my employer and say to my employer please allocate a portion of my fifteen thousand to my housing subsidy and my employer says if i put fifteen thousand it's going to violate because remember your your total allowance shouldn't exceed a, a certain portion of your total cost to company so if my employer then says to me no sorry christina i can't put full fifteen thousand there i can only put ten thousand so if my salary increase or if i get promoted i can go back to my employer and say that since my my salary has increased allow me to please increase my housing allowance so that i can get a bigger tax benefit so in the private sector you can increase your housing allowance if you can prove that you actually are renting or you are paying a bond to that high value whereas in the government sector unless you've made improvement to the house and you can prove to the government that you can actually you know take advantage of this high value they won't increase your housing subsidy automatically so in a nutshell that is really all i wanted to bring forth here so uh, in summary the garment sector just has two components to their payslip they have the payments which would equate to total cost to company or gross earnings in the private sector and we have deductions and the only difference really is what gets deducted before the government pays the money into your account and what gets deducted after the government has paid the money in your account in the private sector for as long as things are in your personal capacity and your employer is not involved your employer is happy to deposit the money in your account and you can sort it out with your insurers and your lenders whereas it seems like it's a preference for the government employees to have their policies and their loan deduct before the government you know uh deposit the money in their account so again thank you so much for always stopping by with uh by our channel and to listen to our videos if this is the type of content you would like to hear please subscribe to our channel and share the videos with your friends and family like always our aim is to make sure that you make informed decisions and you continue to grow and evolve with your money. Until next time, it is goodbye and please keep safe.